Hello, my name is Ian Dean, and today I'll be talking about MeshMaster, which is uh, a Swiss Army knife of useful tools and utilities for uh, doing operations on meshes. Um, it came about because I found the existing uh, tools within Unity for operating on meshes were pretty limited. Um, a lot of things you can only do through the API, which requires you to write a script to do some basic operations. Um, so let's um, get right into it and I'll show you some of the things that MeshMaster can do. So let's create a capsule. Here's a capsule. Well right away there's a mesh on this capsule but it's not an asset in the project and I can get nothing at all other than its name at this at this point. Um, so I would like to be able to maybe get more information on that mesh. So MeshMaster can do that. Um, it's very easy to use. I just go to component mesh mesh master. It's a component and if there's a mesh on this game object mesh master will give you information about that mesh. So right away I can see how many vertices, triangles, I can see what channels the mesh uses. I can see what the bind poses are. If there were sub meshes it would tell me about that. Um, it tells me that there's no light mapping on this object. Um, I can also print uh, any of the channels out to the console, uh, which is awfully handy. It, um, you know, it'll number the vertexes. Uh, if I print triangles, it'll number the triangles. Where's the triangles there? It'll number the triangles. Uh, one very useful thing is um, I can actually get it to print labels. So print labels, let's select a few things here and uh, zoom in. So it actually is telling me what I'm selecting. So which, um, so that's vertex 59. Uh, that there is vertexes 2 and 320. 42 so I could then go back to here and see what is vertex is. This is extremely useful if you're trying to build procedural meshes and you're trying to figure out what's going on in part of your mesh. It'll also um, print out labels on faces so if I select something um, I've selected faces 12 it looks like in 22 there um, so that's a useful thing to be able to do. Uh, Anyway, one of the most useful things that Mesh Baker can do is okay. Let's turn off the labels. Show labels. Okay. One of the most useful things Mesh Baker can do, it, or Mesh Master can do, is um, bake a transformation. So here I've got this capsule. Um, actually, let me, let me create a new cube. Oh no, this will work. Okay. Let's uh, reset its origin reset position. So notice the capsule sits um, be, uh, with half of it above zero and half of it below zero and this makes it hard to place because usually when you're placing objects you want to place them with their bottom just kissing the floor. Um, so wouldn't it be nice to have a capsule mesh that um, can that is just touching the floor. Um, well, that's really easy to do. And imagine it actually, if you if you used a capsule that was rotated a lot too. So maybe we have a rotation here. Uh, let's rotate about x thirty degrees, um, and maybe even an asymmetric scaling too. So let's say you used a mesh that looked a lot like that in your game uh, frequently, and you'd like you wouldn't you'd like not to have to set all these options, not to mention non-uniform scaling will mess with your physics. So you'd like a mesh that could just be at 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 and always look like this. Um, well, Mesh Baker does that. You just click this Bake Transform button. Now I'm going to try that and Mesh Baker actually gives me an error because it detects that this is a built-in shape and if we alter this those changes will become permanent for capsules um, in this shape. So it actually won't let you modify this. It tells you you have to save it first. So as an asset. So I'm going to save mesh as asset. We'll call it capsule mesh. 
Uh, there we go. I've already. So let's overwrite that one. Yes. Okay. So I've saved this as an asset, and then I click Bake Transform. Now look what happens here. Um, the this looks exactly the same as it did, but the position has gone back to zero zero. The rotation has gone back to zero zero. The scale has gone back to one one one. So anytime I create one of these in my scene. Um, they're going to look like that when they're, um, you know, without a rotation, without a scale. So that's very useful when you import models. You can adjust them so their base is at zero. You can get the scaling right and the rotation right without having to build a little hierarchy and configuring things. It also doesn't mess with, it, mess with the physics. Um, okay, let's go back to our capsule. And look at some of the other things it can do. Uh, it can show normals, um, which is kind of useful sometimes. It can show tangents, face normals, bones. Um, let's drag a, uh, where are we, uh, standard assets. Let's drag a character controller into the scene. Um, And we'll add a mesh master component and turn on show bones. Okay, now why is it not showing up? Character component, pelvis, uh, bones. Oh, yeah, it is. So um, you can see the bones are being drawn, so that's kind of handy sometimes. Um, Mesh Baker can also, you can also actually edit meshes. So if I go back to this capsule, um, let's get it uh, oriented here. Um, let's turn off the visualization so that you can see. And let's turn on um, wireframe so it's a little easier to work in this mode. I can go selection. Um, I, uh, let's edit the vertices, I can select these vertices and I can click translate. I can actually translate them by typing in the box, click go, um, or I can also um, uh, grab this and translate them by moving things that way. You can select, oops, um, selection. Uh, you can, oh, another useful thing is you can split normals. I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, you can do it for faces, edges, and vertices. Um, so that's kind of useful. I want to move along here because I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, you can flip face normals. Let me show you that because that's quite useful. So um, let's take half of these and click split, uh, or let's flip face normals. Now if I go back to textured, um, and let's go back there, you can see how um, a bunch of the normal or faces on this have been flipped. So if you have models that you've imported that some of the faces are flipped, um, you can use Mesh Master to flip those. Uh, what else? Flip face, split edges, and split edges. Okay, I'll get to the split edges last because. Okay, another useful thing you can do is um, generate a UV texture to if you want to see what the UVs for something look like. So let's go back to our um, construction worker. And let's generate UV texture. So it asks where I want it saved. Let's we'll save it right at the top here. Um, constructor UVs. Save. And if I click on this, there is the UV layout for the constructor so I could use this to um, design something. So you can get the 
UV layout for the um, just the normal UVs, but you can also get it for the light mapping UVs. Um, a few other things, it'll actually unwrap UVs if you have a model that doesn't have UVs. Um, you can unwrap the UVs. You can also generate U light map UVs by doing the unwrapping as well. Um, you can also recalculate normals on an object. Um, let's see if there's anything else at the moment. Um, yeah, so um, what I'd like to do now is just sort of demonstrate something that I might use Mesh Baker for or Mesh Master for. So I've been, downloaded this Blender model off the internet of this girl. And uh, let's um, hide a few of these other things. Disable the capsule and the third person controller. Deactivate children. Um, and delete the other capsule. And delete the plane. Okay, so I've downloaded this girl off the internet, but she has some problems. Her hair is backwards. Right, so let's look at what's going on there. Um, this is actually her hair, but it's backwards. So um, could I fix that? Well, it turns out that I can. So what I do is I put a Mesh Master component onto the hair. And then um, I actually want to save this mesh as an asset because the mesh that's on there is buried inside this imported prefab, and I can't actually work directly with it. So I'm going to save it. We'll call it girl uh, hair mesh save. Yes, I want to overwrite it. Then um, I don't actually want to. Okay, then I could set up this model to use that hair mesh. Um, there. So it's already set up to use the hair mesh. Um, now I could try to flip the normals, uh, but it's hard to do on a skinned mesh renderer because the bones have warped where the hair mesh really is. So I actually have to um, bring that model out on just a regular um, mesh render object. And then so I can do that just by dragging the mesh into the scene. It's just got a mesh filter and a mesh renderer on it. I'm going to add a, um, a mesh master component to it. Uh, I'm going to select the all the faces and flip them. So I select those all. I'm going to go flip face normals. And notice that her hair, as soon as I did that, it saved those changes to the mesh in the project and her hair is fine. So I can delete this fine. Now I can do the same thing with her skirt. So there's her skirt. I'm going to add a mesh mat master component. I'm going to save that mesh as an asset. So just an asset. Um, girl model. Dress. Press save. Yes. Uh, I, that automatically uses the mesh asset. So I drag that dress mesh into the scene. I apply a mesh master component to it. And uh, selection. Select all the faces. flip them and then I can delete it. So if I go back to my original model then her hair actually looks correct and she's got a dress on now which is is kind of nice. So that's an example of the kinds of things you can do with MeshMaster. Anyway it's available in the asset store and uh, if you're interested, and I also have um, some other assets, Mesh Baker and Fast Shadows, if you're interested, you might want to take a look at those too. Thank you very much.